Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes and today we're taking a look at the 2014 Lexus IS250. This is Lexus's least expensive and smallest rear wheel drive luxury sedan. Today we're going to be focusing on the IS250 and the IS250 F Sport and we're going to be talking about the IS350 in a different video so stay tuned for that. Lexus tells us that a common complaint about previous generation IS models was that the front end wasn't aggressive enough for them, and they've really changed that for the 2014 model year. We're in the regular IS250. There's also an IS250 F Sport that gets a unique front grille. Instead of these horizontal slats, we get some vertical squiggles, and they go all the way from the hood all the way down to the top of the air dam. I think either way, the look is definitely interesting in this segment, and it's grown on me an awful lot since I first saw it. One thing that hasn't quite grown on me is this headlamp and daytime running lamp arrangement. They've divorced the daytime running lamp from the headlamp module, so this piece of plastic right here is actually part of this bumper. So this is a completely separate daytime running lamp swoosh. It kind of reminds me of the Nike swoosh. And then the LED headlamps, which are optional on IS models, are right up here. Standard HID headlamps in all the IS models you can get these LED lamps as part of certain option packages. We have much more aggressive openings right here around the fog lights as well. This generation of Lexus IS is very closely related to the mid-sized Lexus GS, and it's obvious in the platform because it's gotten a decent amount longer for this generation. We now have a much more expressive side treatment going on here as well with this swoosh that extends sort of along the vehicle and all the way back here to these tail lamp modules. I find it a lot more expressive than something like a BMW 3 Series, which is just a little bit plain on the side. The side profile of the IS is also dominated by these very aggressive shoulders, which are also very attractive to my eye. The spindle grille form from the front continues out to the back with these new tail lamp designs that have this same sort of spindle grille effect going on in the back. It's not quite as complete as the front, but it is a little bit interesting. The back end of the Lexus IS is not quite as exciting as some of the entries in this segment, most notably the Cadillac ATS, but I find it overall just a little bit better looking than the BMW 3 Series. I do like the 3 Series, don't get me wrong, but I do find the 3 Series is going for elegant and restrained, which is something that Lexus used to have the market cornered on. Down here we have twin chrome exhaust tips on the IS250 as well as the IS350. Instead of a four-cylinder engine like you'd find under the hood of the Cadillac, the BMW, or the Mercedes competition, Lexus uses a 2.5-liter V6 engine. It produces 204 horsepower and 185 pound-feet of torque. There's no manual transmission available in this generation of the IS anymore, so instead we just get a six-speed automatic transmission and your choice of rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. Because we're in the regular model IS250, we have 225-45R17 rubber all the way around. If you opt for the IS250 F Sport, then you get 255 with rubber in the back in a staggered configuration, which does aid handling just a little bit. Front seat comfort in the IS250 is excellent. I found these seats to be a little bit more comfortable than the Cadillac or the Mercedes seats, but they're not quite as adjustable as the BMW M Sport seats. Now, if you opt for the IS250 F Sport, you do get more aggressive bolstering on the side, but it's already pretty aggressive on this base model IS250. Leather is not available in most of the models of IS250. You do have to opt for a specific luxury package in order to get leather, otherwise you get these new tech seats. All models of IS have a tilt telescoping steering column, but the power adjustable version is an option package. The rear seats in the IS250 have grown over the previous generation, but it is obvious that Cadillac as well as Lexus were both chasing the previous generation of BMW 3 Series when they planned their current generation platforms, and they didn't expect BMW to grow the 3 Series as much as they did. The current generation 3 Series is huge, and its back seat is considerably larger than the IS250 or the Cadillac ATS. That is one thing to keep in mind. However, at six feet tall, I still have a few inches of legroom sitting behind myself in the driver's seat. The seat bottom cushions are a little bit close to the ground, so that is something you might want to keep in mind if you routinely carry adults in the vehicle. The middle hump right here is fairly aggressive. If I move all the way over, maybe you can see this a little bit. That's to be expected in any rear-wheel drive car. However, this hump is just a little bit bigger than that BMW 3 Series. These rear seats also fold in a 60-40 folding fashion with the trunk to allow you to put larger cargo items from the trunk into the car. One thing to keep in mind, these seats do not fold level with the cargo load floor in the trunk, however. Another thing to note if you routinely carry adults in the rear of your sedan is, I'm six feet tall, I'm sitting upright in this back seat, my hair is touching the ceiling, and I also can't see out because these C pillars in the IS250 are fairly aggressive and they're also fairly low. And that's thanks to the IS250's sexy side profile, but if you're an adult, it means you're gonna be hitting your head on these as you try and get in and out of the car. Let's walk around the interior of the IS250. These are the new Lux seats. So this is imitation leather, not real leather. And in our particular tester, these are the cooled seats, which are part of an option package. 
The doors are a mixture of new lux as well as just regular old injection molded plastic that you'd find in a wide variety of vehicles, all soft touch plastics. Soft touch plastics over here on this interestingly shaped dashboard as well. Decently sized glove box for a car in this class. A lot of these compact rear wheel drive stands don't have a very large glove box. You can see Lexus still uses a decent amount of wood and the wood is fairly attractive. Comes in a wide variety of different shades. It's always been something that Lexus has been known for. If we back out, you can see how interesting and uh, different this dashboard is in the IS250. I'm really not sure if I like the style, but I have met a number of people that really liked the way that this dashboard looked, so I have to give it that. Right here, we have a fairly small 7-inch infotainment screen. This is not a touch screen, so everything is controlled by the standard Lexus remote control uh, in the center console. I do think that the screen looks a little bit small, especially because it's in this fairly large bezel right up here on the dashboard. I had hoped that they would use the larger screen found in the other Lexus models, but they didn't. That means that the iDrive in the current generation 3 series is quite a bit bigger, as well as Cadillac Q. We have dual zone climate control. These are touch buttons right here for the temperature, and everything else is physical in this layout. Below that we have our audio controls, and our particular vehicle has the optional Mark Levinson sound system. These are those heated and cooled seat controls. This is the Lexus remote touch controller. We'll go over that a little bit more when we go over infotainment, but I will say that this is one of my least favorite input methods for a navigation system. This is our drive mode selector. If you opt for the F-Sport model, then you get an additional option over here, which is Sport Plus. That has a reduced traction control and stability control mode. The traction and stability control in the IS is fairly intrusive. These cables right here are our USB infotainment cables. That's one nice feature about the IS is that a lot of vehicles they leave you to dangle those cables and get them caught in latches. And Lexus gives you this interesting little clip here so that you can clip them out of harm's way from the latch, which is right here. You have two USB ports, an auxiliary input right there, and a medium-sized center cubby there in the center armrest. You have two large cup holders here. These were easily able to accommodate large takeout sodas, but they're not adjustable. On the driver's side, we have our start-stop button there on the right. We have a four-dial instrument cluster with a medium-sized LCD right there. That LCD is controllable and is multifunction via this button right here on the right side of the steering wheel. We have a wide variety of functions available there. Back button and page change button for that same system. Lane departure warning, cruise control stock right there. We have our automatic wipers over here. There's the auto button on the side. Automatic wipers are an option, they're not standard. Shift pedals are, however, standard on the 2014 IS. Moving over to the left side, these are our radio controls and our phone buttons with voice command. Over on the far left, you'll find the control for the optional auto high beams, odometer over there, window switches and power door locks, power mirrors, and our three position seat memory control, which is optional. When it comes to our exclusive trunk comfort index, the IS250 scores seven out of 10, because this is about a medium sized trunk in this segment. The ATS's trunk is a decent amount smaller. It's very, very small, fairly uncomfortable as well. And the BMW 3 Series trunk has grown enormously in this last generation, and it's almost as big as previous generations of BMW 5 Series trunks, and even gives the 7 Series a run for its money. We do have a nice handle right here in the trunk lid, which helps you close the trunk on yourself. Let's take a look at infotainment now. If you don't care about infotainment, then just follow the instructions below to skip on ahead to the drive section of the review. Now, base Lexus models will receive a display audio system that's a little bit different than what we're looking at right now, and it uses a control dial instead of the Lexus remote touch controller in the center of the console. Now, this is the same software that Toyota and Lexus are putting in a wide variety of vehicles from the Toyota Corolla all the way up to this Lexus IS at the moment. We expect it to spread. It's defined by this three position or optionally a two position home screen. You can access that home screen by the home button right on the Lexus remote touch controller. You can also change what's in these quadrants. So right now we have a navigation quadrant, we have our fuel economy, and we have an audio quadrant. You can change what is in those quadrants and you can also rearrange them to your desire. Clicking on a quadrant takes you to that particular section of the infotainment software. So if we click on that section, we go right here to our fuel economy. We can also see past records in the car. We can clear them, etc. If we go return, it'll take you not back to the home screen, but back to the other information screen. So it's like it's shortcutting you to that particular uh, portion of the system, and then from there you would navigate as if you would hit the menu button in that Lexus remote touch controller, rather than this home button, which takes you back to the home screen. If we go back to the audio screen here, you'll see source. You can change your source, reorder them, etc. Reordering is a little bit trickier in the Lexus products because of the Lexus remote touch controller. In the Toyota products, you can just drag and click these icons around to reorder them. I do find that a little bit easier. 
There is no direct access button to navigation, so you do have to hit that home button and then click on over to the navigation screen to use navigation. From here, you can enter your destinations. You can also enter these via natural voice commands, and the voice command system in this software is greatly improved over previous generations of the Lexus uh, navigation software. Direct access to address, points of interest, destination assist uh, connects you to their OnStar-like system where you can actually talk to a person and have them help you enter the destination and that'll download right into the system. We have access to previous destinations, etc. Returning again takes you back to the map or whatever else you were viewing in the system. doesn't take you back to the home screen. In fact, if you keep going back, there's no way to get to the home screen other than that direct access home button. If we're on this menu button, we have access to our climate controls, which are duplicated physically below the nav system in the IS. Nav, which we were already there. The Lexus app suite. And the Lexus app suite is your app integration on your smartphone. We have access to Pandora, iHeartRadio, uh, OpenTable, and a number of other products. You do have to have an app, and it does have to be registered and logged in with Lexus in order to use that. There are both iPhone, Android, and Android apps available at this time. On the info screen, we see Lexus Insider. That's uh, pre-canned information about your car that's downloaded via Sirius XM satellite radio uh, to the car so you can listen to different things on how to use different features in your car and they're continually updating that. We have weather and traffic being delivered by HD radio rather than XM satellite radio. If you're in an area where you do not have a strong HD signal with XM traffic and weather, but you do have the Lexus Enform app on your smartphone, then it will use your smartphone's data service to download the weather and traffic information. The biggest reason for this change is that you no longer need a SiriusXM data subscription in order to get traffic and weather, so it's free to all users regardless of whether you have an active XM Sirius satellite subscription. Back at the radio screen, we can see my problem with Lexus Enform and this remote touch controller. If you're driving along, it takes a decent amount of time off the road to choose all these little options right here that are on the screen via this remote touch controller. This is the same software that they used to use back when it was a touch screen and it was much easier to just choose an option and then touch it rather than dealing with this little remote touch joystick. I just find it fairly unintuitive. If we go back to the home screen and choose media, we're now on an iDevice with Bluetooth connection. The difference with, with this software versus previous generations of Lexus software is we can now browse our Bluetooth sources just as if it was connected via the USB cables. This is a major improvement in functionality. So we can hit playlists and we can see recent music and then we can just select songs right like there uh, just as if we were using a USB cable. We don't have quite the same level of functionality and it is not quite as fast as the USB connection but it is just as fully featured these days versus the USB cable which is a good thing because we did have some problems with iOS 7 and this interface. It looks like there may be some software updates on somebody's end either Toyota or on Apple's end in order to make that work. One thing to keep in mind. Go back Going back to the home screen, we can now see that our Bluetooth audio is updated right over here in the lower right corner. The reason you buy the IS over a Lexus ES is not because it's faster, because the IS250 isn't faster than an ES350. It's really not any faster than the Lexus Hybrid either. It's because of the chassis dynamics. The IS was designed to go head-to-head -head with the compact rear-wheel drive sedans of the Germans, and Lexus really did a very good job with that very first-generation IS. And that tradition has continued for them. This IS250 is a delight to drive out on the road. Even though we have electric power steering in this generation, the steering is very direct and has a decent feel to it. I wouldn't call this as good as prior generations of the IS or prior generations of the BMW 3 Series, but it is very competitive with the current generation of 3 Series in terms of feel. Now the 3 Series has gotten a decent amount bigger this generation, and that was something that nobody expected. Not uh, anybody out in the automotive press, and certainly none of the competitive manufacturers. And that's really obvious, because when Lexus designed this generation of IS, and when Cadillac des designed the current generation of Cadillac ATS, they really went head-to-head -head with that last generation of BMW 3 Series, which means that if you want the corner carving sedan in this category, then it's going to be the Cadillac or the Lexus. If you want the softer, more luxurious ride, then it's gonna be, strangely enough, the BMW or the Mercedes. The BMW has the softest suspension, really, in this segment. Even the Mercedes is just a little bit tighter. If you check out our previous video on the Lexus IS, we'll pop a link down below, that was when we had the IS at the launch event, and that was all track-based for the most part, and it was really focusing on performance. 
In that light, it's really obvious that Lexus has one of the best chassis available in this segment. Cadillac ATS, I would rank just a little bit better, but the Lexus has a very good balance to it in terms of refinement, but definitely handling. The BMW, on the other hand, tends to plow because it is more front heavy than the Lexus. It also is a decent amount softer. The big difference, however, is that in all forms, the BMW is faster. So the BMW 328i is definitely faster to 60. It's almost a second faster than this IS250. We scored seven seconds to 60 in this Lexus. And of course, the Lexus uh, IS350 is a decent amount slower than the BMW 335i. So if absolute performance is your goal, then you really do need to look at that BMW. However, the on-track performance is balanced out by the better dynamics in this Lexus IS. I don't suspect that it will actually be faster around any track because what the BMW gives up in chassis performance, it more than makes up with in actual raw performance uh, from that engine. So acceleration, braking, etc., is just a little bit better in that BMW and that really does compensate out on the track. There's a great divergence of opinion in the naturally aspirated versus turbocharged debate. I tend to like turbochargers myself, but they do operate very differently. A naturally aspirated engine tends to build torque as the RPM rises and does that in a fairly linear fashion with a definite torque peak. The turbocharged engines in this segment, they'll have a pretty big torque deficit down below about 2000 RPM or so, and then the torque erupts very rapidly at around 2000 RPM levels off maybe around 2500 rpm stays pretty much exactly the same until you hit about 4500 to 5000 rpm at which point it starts to drop off again it's just a very different feel it means that the feel in the v6 in this is 250 is just a little bit more predictable it's a little bit easier to drive and i really wish that this vehicle had a manual transmission in it because i think it would just be a little bit more fun and unfortunately the 2014 is 250 does not come with a manual transmission at all the IS250 handles incredibly well out on the road, and the IS250 F Sport handles just that little bit better. The F Sport also gives you Sport Plus mode with a slightly reduced stability control program, which is good because the IS250 base model, which we're in right now, has a fairly intrusive stability control system, even though the limits in this car are fairly high. This car is very well balanced. It's a joy to fling out on these winding mountain roads. The steering is incredibly accurate, and the turn-in is really precise. The IS250 really excels in drivetrain refinement. This V6 engine is buttery smooth, and I would call this almost the equal of BMW's 3-liter inline-6 engine, which is sheer perfection. Now, BMW doesn't really use that engine much anymore. Instead, they've switched to 2-liter turbo 4-cylinder engines, and those turbo 4-cylinder engines are just not as smooth as this V6 engine. I know that some people don't like the way V6 engines sound, but honestly, they sound better than a 4-cylinder engine, so we win points there as well. BMW has been equipping the 328i in America with their start-stop system in most models, and that start-stop system just seems to amplify the four-cylinder roughness, especially when the system is stopping and starting. Now, I do have to admit that that start-stop system does pay dividends, and the 328i, when we had it, averaged 32 miles per gallon versus the 27.7 miles per gallon in this IS250, but the IS250 is considerably smoother. Which of these luxury stands is right for you really depends on your priority list. The Mercedes-Benz C250 really didn't score very high on any of my lists, so I would place that last. The BMW 328i is the sedan for you if you prefer the best straight-line performance or the best fuel economy because it delivered very well on both of those fronts. The Cadillac ATS is the best handling vehicle, and the Lexus IS250 is the quietest, the smoothest, and perhaps straddles all these lines the best of any of the competition. Lexus has priced the 2014 IS250 very aggressively. Things start at $34,950, fairly well equipped as far as base models go in this segment, and they end up just south of $45,000, completely loaded with leather and all the options. The most expensive model would be the all-wheel drive IS250 F Sport with all the option packages that you can add to it. The IS250 wins for me by a very slight hair in this segment over the BMW 328i. That's really a tough comparison for me because I do like the way that BMW 320i looks and it plays to things that I like. It is bigger, it is softer, it is more comfortable in some respects than the IS250, but BMW by chasing luxury has left out some of the sport that the IS250 gets. The IS250 is about handling, not going fast, and it's also about being very smooth and very quiet while doing that. That's something also that the BMW 328, uh, the Cadillac, 
ATS 2.0T, as well as the 1.8 liter turbo in the Mercedes-Benz C250 just don't do quite as well. Those four cylinder engines are not as smooth. They're a little bit rougher around the edges than this incredibly smooth V6 engine. The V6 in the IS250 is down on power compared to those, but still seven seconds to 60 really is not bad for this segment. The IS250 plays on those classic BMW qualities of very good handling, very good response, very good feedback, and a very nice feel out on the road. It is funny when you think about it that the benchmark in this segment is still the BMW 3 Series, but it's being benchmarked for slightly different reasons than it ever used to be. Because the Cadillac ATS and this Lexus IS250 are really the handling champions in this segment, something that BMW had the market cornered on, and now BMW has the market cornered on well-rounded luxury. Again, I'm Alex Dykes, and thanks for taking the time to check out this video. This has been the 2014 Lexus IS250. Be sure and browse around our channel. We have some videos on the Cadillac ATS 3.6, as well as the BMW 328i. The BMW 328i video is a little bit older, so it may not be quite as good as this video. Be sure and click that subscribe banner at the bottom of your screen so you can be updated on all of our latest videos. Go ahead and send me messages on YouTube, comment on this video, tell me what you liked, what you didn't like, and we'll see you later.